Welcome to our weekly Communities of Practice Sunday check-in session. My name is Katya and I'm a member of the Communities of Practice team. I hope everyone has had a good week and I welcome you all to a half hour of Dharma, reflection and community connection. It is customary for us in Australia to begin any meeting by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land. I would like to start today by acknowledging the Darawal people as the traditional owners of the land on which Nantian Institute resides. I also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lands on which you all are. And I pay my respects to the elders, past, present, and emerging. The check-in sessions have been developed by our communities of practice team and community. In 2018 and 2019, we're on a number of community days and then began this weekly check-in sessions in October, 2020. The purposes of this event were as outlined here, guided by humanistic Buddhism to develop and cultivate our practice and our friendships. And now more than ever, the practice has become vital. And the purpose of today is exactly that. Before proceeding, um, just providing a reminder regarding the Daylight Savings Time change next Sunday, 4th of April. We will wind the clocks one hour backward in Australia. So if you are in another country, please check the time conversion websites to make sure that you do not miss the session. And I would like now to introduce Venerable Dr. Jiwei, who is the founder of the Communities of Practice and the director of the Humanistic Buddhism Center at NTI to guide this session. Thank you, Katya, for hosting this session again. Welcome to everyone for helping one another to build this habit of reflective pauses each week. Let's begin with our usual check-in of body and mind. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right, Katya. <laughs> Let's now sit upright and gently close your eyes. Breathe. Let's bring our attention to our forehead. Relax. Relax our eyes facial muscles, relax, relax our neck muscles, shoulders, upper arms, lower arms, hands and fingers, relax. Relax our back muscles. Relax. Relax our thigh muscles. Calf muscles. Feet. And toes. Allow any weight that we may be carrying completely be released from our body. Then gently bring your attention to the tip of your nose. Watch every in-breath and out-breath without control and without judgment. 
for the next one minute. When you're ready, you may gently open your eyes and return to the moment. It is hard to believe that we are now approaching the end of March. A quarter of 2021 has passed us by. Indeed, it is a good time today to explore our paths to awakening. This topic was inspired by a question regarding whether it is better to relentlessly stick to one path or to try whatever experiences appear most suitable at that time and not stick to any particular path. So let's start with what I call the Buddhist project. What do Buddhists really want to achieve? I would like to think that we are trying to disentangle the tangles that represent the messiness of human life. Let me explain by rearranging the Buddhist Four Noble Truths. There are a web of conditions in our lives, what I would call existential conditions. And these conditions may lead us to feel dukkha or dis ease or discomfort. So we adopt Buddhist practices to alleviate the dis-ease and help us to pay attention to the reality of this experience. It is this training that will eventually liberate ourselves to reach a situation of ease. This means that our path helps us to look closely at the tangles, find out what is entangling us, and then try to disentangle ourselves, one knot at a time with wisdom. So getting back to the question of why we sometimes jump from one path to another, this is because such clarity and wisdom are very hard to come by. We are just too confused, or maybe we are programmed to be confused. Let me try to illustrate what I mean. Thanks to Zoom, we now see ourselves more and more frequently through our webcams, for example, like right now. So is this pixelated object that I see on the screen really me? Is the sound that I hear coming out my, of my speaker really my voice? Or are they just a part of my consciousness stream that the chemicals in my brain interpret as being me? Or is that snap camera image of the cat that Priscilla is carrying on top of her head? Is that the real Priscilla's cat? You see, our brain is so well engineered to manufacture construct after construct that we recognize these imageries as real. These constructs prevent us from realizing the truth of the magic of our brain's operation. When we feel entangled, we are tricked by our experiences to believe in permanence and substantiality. But the Buddhist path to awakening is to help us to let go of the past, cherish the ordinary beauty of the present, and not worry about the future that has not yet arrived. The Buddha teaches us to establish ourselves well in virtue, as well as to develop our consciousness and understanding so as to help us to realize the realities 
of what we really see, hear, smell, taste, touch, and think as being nothing more than constructs. Let's now give ourselves a quiet moment to reflect on what unpleasant tangles we may be experiencing. What Buddhist practice can help me to be at ease or to see the truth when confronted by unpleasant experiences. The importance of having a daily practice, whatever it may be, that's correct. It could be a short reflective pause like we have just done today and making that daily instead of waiting till the end of the week. Joey sees both Buddhist practices as being like a bag of tools. And uh, depending on the experience, we can skillfully pick the appropriate tool to help us calibrate and to prevent further entanglement. Yes, Dean, all things are impermanent. Every moment will pass. Celia tells us that awakening is a multidisciplinary approach. And whatever helps to make one a kinder and more resilient person, that's a good path. Remy reminds us not to run away from unpleasantness, but learn from it. And to practice because it can be comforting in times of grief and crisis. We hope the check-in was helpful to you and that uh, you experience the loving kindness of this community as it is offered here today. For anyone who might be experiencing a greater need than uh, what today could meet, uh, or if you have any feedback or comments, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us at the email above. So just a reminder that registrations are now open for the event Disruptive Technology to be held on Sunday 18th of April at 11 a.m. It will be a different link to the one that we use weekly for the Sunday check-in session. So please go to communities.nantian.edu.au to register. And if you have not met the new president of Nantian Institute, Professor Dennis Kirkpatrick, uh, you will hear a few minutes of welcome from her at this uh, workshop. And as we check out this month, we'd like you all to ask, we'd like to ask you all to reflect for a moment um, and send thoughts to the loved ones, friends and strangers who may need some care and healing. May they feel the warmth, strength and love of this community as we recite the dedication of merits together. Let us now dedicate the goodness of what you have done to all living beings. May kindness, compassion, joy and equanimity pervade all worlds. May we cherish and build affinities to benefit all beings. May Chan, Pure Land and Precepts inspire equality and patience. May our gratitude and humility give rise to great vows. Thank you everyone for joining us. For those who have time, we will be having our usual post check-in discussions now. So do stay around if you have time. Otherwise, we'll be back next week at 11 a.m. If you joined us later today, please note that daylight savings uh, end in Australia next Sunday morning, and we will wind the clock uh, one hour backwards in Australia. So for our overseas community, the session will start an hour later for you than usual. 
Also, if any newcomers are here today, if it is your first session with us, you're mostly welcome to say hello, hello um, as we speak later today. Look forward to seeing you all again soon. Mm -hmm.